not to be confused with Menomina. <laughs> right. uh, which of these physical phenomena is the cause of a mirage? And we talk about mirages where Dr. Schultz made that little video for us. <laughs> refraction, reflection, diffraction, and interference. <laughs> Seconds. One ten. I'll stop. Is that everybody? Seven ten. That looks like everybody. All right. Very good. Uh, when when you what causes a mirage? You see while driving on the road. Refraction of light in warm air. The reflection of light in the atmosphere. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, this middle one, what causes a mirage you see while driving on a road? Have y'all seen any the last few days? No, mostly because I drive oh, yeah, it's finally cool. Right, right. All right, so five, ten more seconds. atmosphere no longer existed, how would the time of sunset be affected? That is, would you see the sunset occur earlier? Would you see it it's not change at all? Summer, there's no one there really. <laughs> Look at the sunset. Okay. They call it a sunset. Stop at 35, 35. Somehow I have 16 clickers, but I only have 15 people. That's good. Can we do some ghosts? Just say it. Hey. Right answer. So sunset would occur over earlier. Remember, with the atmosphere, uh, we see the sunset drop below the horizon, or excuse me, we we'll still see the sun even after the sun has dropped below the horizon. Uh, so without the atmosphere, it would occur earlier. Right. I don't know, it's a mystery, isn't it? All right, so we're going to see two types of lenses. I'm going to move on to thin lenses. Lenses are a lot, a lot similar to uh, mirrors. Or you know two types of lenses. The first, this first one is called a convex lens. This is also called a converging lens, so I'll call it convex just to be confusing. Um, because the convex lens is a lot like the concave mirror. We'll see this when we do the, the ray diagrams. This thing acts a lot like the concave mirror. So I'm going to put that sort of in parentheses. It acts like a concave mirror. That is, you know, uh, remember the concave mirror had those three scenarios? It could either produce a real, virtual, or no image at all. We'll see that with convex lenses as well. But the names are switched, so convex is like the concave mirror. You can think of it because the concave mirror was also converging. So we name them this based on their shape. 
but uh, for the lenses, the converging mirror lens is actually a convex shape. So we have two different names, one based on their shape, convex or concave, and then the other based on what they do to the light, converging or diverging. And then this next lens is called the concave. So you can see how the shape of it is sort of caved in. Uh, this is a diverging lens. Meaning that when light rays come in here, they are caused to diverge, which we'll see when we do the ray diagrams. And this acts like a convex mirror. All right, so just like the convex mirror, remember it had uh, only one image that it produced. That was a virtual, upright, smaller image. The concave lens will also do the same thing. So the convex mirror, that's like the security mirror, produces the same type of image as a concave lens. Some of you wear eyeglasses have concave lenses. Uh, then we have some other types of lenses. You just sort of need to know these in name. You might see them in a multiple choice question where I just ask you to identify this type of lens. They're pretty simple though, and once you know the shape, this first one is a plano convex. It's called that because it's planar on one side and it's convex shape on the other. This is a convex concave. Convex, concave. Uh, don't worry about the meniscus, you don't need to know that. There are actually two types of meniscus lenses, but we're not going to get into them. And then you can also have a plano concave. That is, it's planar on one side and it caves in on the other side, or it's concave on the other side. Right. So just know those in name. So we're just going to deal with concave and convex. Those are sometimes called biconcave or biconvex. That just means that they're concave on both sides or convex on both sides. All right, and then just like we had with mirrors, we can define the focal length in two ways. Uh, it is half the radius of curvature. Yeah, half the radius of the sphere, one half the radius of the sphere from which the lens was cut. I put it in parentheses because it's not actually cut from a sphere, right? But we can think of it as being cut from a sphere, that we have the sphere of glass and we're actually cutting a lens out of it. Um, so, for example, this shows how a convex lens shape or is constructed. And again, lenses aren't made this way. They make them either by melting plastic and, and putting them into a form, or they can take glass and grind it down to make the particular shape. But this can help you think about what the shape of it's like. Uh, imagine that you have these two big spheres of glass and you bring them together. And where they overlap is where we have our convex lens. So this shape right here is our convex lens. Notice that this has two focal points. I have a focal point over here that corresponds with the right hand side and then I have a focal point over here that corresponds with the left hand side, the left spherical side of the lens. Okay, so each side of the lens has a different focal length. Our focal point. Uh, we'll assume that our lenses will have the same focal point on each side. Though you can have lenses that have different focal lengths on either side, but most of them are going to be the same. Uh, most lenses that you'll deal with, whether it's in instruments or whatever, but you can have lenses that have one focal point on one side and another on another side. Uh, and that is just that the curvature of both sides is the same. When you're in graduate school, some of you chemists might actually build some of your own instruments, and uh, and you'll deal with this where you, you actually use lenses and what have you to build instruments. So, of course, in the instruments that you use now, a lot of the instruments that you use have their own lenses that they deal with glass. Right. Um, we can also define the focal point or the focal length based on where parallel rays focus. So if I have light rays that come in for a convex lens, they're going to focus at the focal point. So 
we have two ways to describe the focal point, just like we did with mirrors. It's one half the center of curvature, and then it's the where uh, parallel light rays focus. One half the center of curvature and where parallel light rays focus. You can also have, with a diverging lens, you can define your focal point in that way as well. Let your light rays come in parallel. But because this is a diverging lens, these light rays are going to diverge from one another. But they're going to diverge in such a way that if you were to trace them back, they would go through the focal point. Like that. So we'll define the focal point in that way for diverging lenses. And this will come up when we do our ray diagrams as well. Oh, what? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. And then we're also going to define our magnification. This is all the same as what we had for mirrors. There are just a couple of small differences. Our magnification is negative Q over P. We can also define our magnification as height of the image over height of the object, just like we did for our mirrors. And then all the same sign conventions are going to be in effect. That is, if our magnification is bigger than one, it's a bigger image, makes the image bigger. If it's less than one, it's a smaller image, it's equal to one of the same size image. If the magnification is positive, it's upright, it's negative, it's inverted. So all these are the same. And then if you have a negative magnification, that means that your image height is also negative. So negative generally means that it's upside down. And we have the same lens equation, which if y'all are in lab, you've already used the lens equation. This looks the same as it does for mirrors, and it works a lot the same. Let's see, did I start the report? Uh, it works a lot the same. 1 over f equals 1 over p plus 1 over q. We're going to have those same uh, notations. That is, if I have an image distance that is negative here, that means that I have a virtual image. But the one difference that, that there is is that if I have an image, say I have a convex lens, and I have an object right here, so this is my object P, uh, and my image distance would be Q, this would be a virtual image. So this is different from mirrors in that virtual images are on the same side as the object. All right. Virtual images are on the same side as the object. But if you recall, for mirrors, virtual images were on the opposite side of the object. Right. You have the object on one side, like a flat mirror. You have the mirror, and then you have the virtual image. But that's not true for lenses. For lenses, it's going to be the other way, that the virtual image will be on the same side as the object. We'll see this with our ray diagram, but this is always true when you have a single lens. That is that the virtual image is always on the same side as the object. And a virtual image is going to have a negative image distance. On the other hand, If this is my object, I have an image over here. This is my image distance. That's going to be a real image. So real images are on the opposite side of the lens. So a real image is on the opposite side of the lens. The object distance is usually positive, though we'll see a scenario with two lens systems where you can have a, a negative image distance. And you might have seen that in lab. You might not have, but uh, this is called a virtual object. And we'll deal with that when we get to combination lenses. Did y'all deal with virtual objects in uh, lab? I recall. It depends how you spaced your lenses, really. If you spaced your lenses really close together when you did that experiment. Oh, yes. Yeah. You put them really close together, so you had to have a negative P? OK. We'll, we'll work through an example of that. Uh, and then. One other thing is that the focal length for convex lenses, remember that's this type of lens, is positive. And the focal length for concave lenses, 
And it looks like this is negative. So this is similar to mirrors. The focal length for concave mirrors was positive. Remember, concave mirrors and convex lenses are similar in the way they treat light. And the focal length for convex mirrors was negative. But remember, a convex mirror, which is a diverging mirror, is similar to a concave lens. So in your mind, try not to get those mixed up, but also it's nice to remember the similarities. And a convex lens is similar to a concave mirror. And a concave lens is similar to a convex mirror. Okay? Y'all follow me on that? I found that very confusing when I first heard it, but the, the words are different because the words describe the shape, not what they do to light. Concave and convex. Right, let's try this one. Concave lens has a focal length of 10 centimeters. If the object is located 10 centimeters to the left of the lens, where is the image? About 15 more seconds. The thing here, and on these questions, you got to be very clear on what the signs of these various values are. This is a concave lens, like this, and so the focal length is equal to negative 10 centimeters. All right, so that might have been where you messed up. Likely that's, that's where you messed up. Uh, the object is located 10 centimeters to the left of the lens, so P is equal to 10 centimeters. And it's actually the object is over here, 10 centimeters to the left of the lens. And then I can find Q, 1 over F minus 1 over P, 1 over negative 10 minus 1 over 10. Is that right? Did, you, did I mark B as the right answer? Yeah. Well, that's not right. That's not right. Uh, that's to the negative 1. So uh, that's equal to, what, negative 2 over 10, which is negative 5 centimeters. All right, so now we need to think about where this image is. Now, 5, there's only one answer with 5. So even without knowing exactly where the image is, you could say that it's 5 centimeters to the left of the lens. All right. uh, that's going to tell us, then, that the image is on the same side this is the object, this is the image. The image is on the same side as the object because this is negative. So this negative says that it's virtual, so it's on the same side as object. All right, 
Okay, so A is the right answer. Um, if you put B, did you take a positive focal length? That's what you did, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that, yeah, if you put B, you just took a positive focal length. All right. Uh, further, you could find the magnification. Magnification is negative Q over P. It's a virtual image. Virtual images are always upright if they're the result of a, of a one lens system. Uh, and so it's going to be negative, negative 5 over P, which was 10. So this is positive 1 half. So remember, this is a concave lens. Just like with convex mirrors, so security mirrors, it always produces virtual virtual images that are upright, positive magnification, and smaller than the object. Just like a security mirror. Virtual, upright, smaller images. I'm going to help you with this next one. Uh, the human eye, you know, consists of your eyeball which has a fixed shape, and then you have a lens, which consists of the cornea and the lens in the eye, uh, and they act as a convex lens to focus the light onto the retina. And the retina is at the back of the eyeball. All right, so you have light rays that come in. If I have something that's really far away, my light rays come in, and where do they focus relative to the lens? Do they focus in front of the focal point? at the focal point or behind the focal point. If I have light rays that are coming from an object that's very, very far away, that means they're parallel. Do the light rays focus in front of the focal point, at the focal point, or behind the focal point? At the focal point, right? That's how we define focal point, right? So these light rays are going to focus at the focal point. That means that in your eye, you know, most things like cameras and microscopes and stuff, you don't change the focal length of the lens. If you change the object distance, then you change the image distance to make it focus, right? Like on a microscope, you can change the length of the tube, or you can move the platform up and down. And on a telescope, likewise, you can, uh, well, everything's already going to this way. With a camera, you can move the film away from or towards the lens, or mostly you're moving the lens back and forth. But for optical instruments, you're always changing the image distance, because that's easier. But with the human eye, you can't change the image distance, because this distance is fixed, right? I mean, your eyeball isn't going to change shape so much. I mean, it does a little bit as you grow, but not very much. Uh, so instead, it's really ingenious, actually, that this lens will change focal lengths. So if I have an object that's far away, I have a focal length that is equal to the length of my eyeball. And if my eyeball is misshapen, too long or too short, then I'll either be near sighted or far sighted. That's where that comes from. Right? The light and the focus at the right point. All right. So let's say that I now have an object that's nearby. So I have the same eyeball. All right. I have a lens that's going to change, and then I have an object that is nearby. I can have rays that will come in here. They're going to come parallel to the axis, and they'll go through the focal point. I have another focal point over here. It'll go through the focal point and parallel to the axis to form an image on the retina. So what there has happened to the focal length of this lens? I'm now looking at something, I have something far away, and then I now have something that's really close to me. What has happened to the focal length of my lens? It's what? It's gotten smaller, right? So the focal length was here, for coming far away, and now the focal length has gotten here. See how these little muscles in your eye? Is that what they're called? <laughs> <laughs> so the ciliary body, I'll get this in anatomy, right? Y'all had anatomy, some of you? None of you? Okay. Well, the ciliary body uh, that causes that lens to change shape. And you'll have a lens that'll be long and skinny in this scenario, and then you'll have a lens that'll be short and fat in this scenario, which will shorten the focal length. So it squeezes that lens down and makes it have a, a shorter focal length. All right? So what's the answer on this one? Right, the focal length decreases. That's C. 
it's really pretty phenomenal, actually. I mean, really no other instrument that we have works like the or not. Likewise with the detection of light, like with the rods and cones, it's, it's really amazing. And also just amazing that you have an instrument that works for like 80 years with very little, with very little problems. Okay, just a few more seconds. For a blind, I don't know. Uh, does anybody know? I mean, I guess blindness can have a number of different causes. Uh, I don't know. I think it's just. I did see a guy, actually, a, a guy that was completely blind. I didn't see him. He was on YouTube, so, you know, whatever kind of thing like this. But he could echolocate like a, uh, like a dolphin. Yeah, so he would make these, like, clicking noises or whatever. And he he would detect the sound waves when they come back to him. He could make out shapes, like he could see a tree or whatever and tell how far the limbs were up and make out big shapes and make out people as they were coming towards him. So it was really fascinating, I think. Hey, good job, y'all. Seventeen million, y'all are on a roll. <laughs> this is pretty easy. Uh, not an easy chapter, but it's it's fairly straightforward, correct? Let's try this. There's a lot of information that's embedded in the language of this problem, so uh, make sure you're careful about your signs and various things.
Wrap it up, it's a little bit longer. I'm, I'm gonna address that in a second. Stop at four five, four five. Still missing one person, I think. Uh, first of all, the focal length, it's a convex lens, that's a lens like this, so the focal length is positive, so it's 10 centimeters. Uh, the image distance is 20 centimeters, but it's negative because it's a virtual image. And I want to know the magnification, which is negative Q over P. So the first thing I'm going to do is find P. That's 1 over F minus 1 over Q. Inverse of that, 1 over 10 minus 1 over negative 20. That's uh, 2 over 20 plus 1 over 20. 20 over 3 centimeters. And then I can find my magnification, which is negative Q over P. It looks like it is 3. Positive it's equal to three. Very good. If you have a number of homework problems, I hope you practice this. You'll also have a homework problem where you actually have to solve a system of equations where you have to take the lens equation, one over S equals one over Q plus one over P, and then the uh, magnification equation, maybe a few of a piece, and then solve that system of equations. So you can be prepared to do that for the exam, where I have two equations and two unknowns, and I have substitute one into the other. We had that here, two equations and two unknowns, but it was very straightforward to solve. But uh, the same thing that you can do, I think that all of you are okay on that. Like, for example, where I'd have to say Q is equal to M, D, and then plug that in here, and then solve for the focal length or whatever. Okay? There's a whole more question similar to that. Just make sure that you're on top of it. All right. Um, we're going to do ray diagrams. Likely on the next exam, you'll have to either draw a ray diagram or, um, or at least you'll see it on multiple choice question where I give you a series of rays and one of them will be correct or incorrect. You have to pick out which one that is. These are very similar to what we had for mirrors. And we have some simple rules that are very similar. Uh, the first is draw a ray parallel to the axis. It refracts and travels through the focal point. So if I'm looking at a convex lens, my ray parallel to the axis through the focal point. That's how I define focal point. Draw a ray through the focal point. It refracts and travels parallel to the axis. Alright, so I have a ray that comes through the focal point like that, and then it goes parallel to the axis. That's just the opposite of rule number one. And then I draw a ray through the center of the lens. And it passes through the through the lens with no refraction.
That means it doesn't bend at all. So if I have a, a lens like this, at a light ray that just passes right through the center. In each of these lenses, we're going to define the optical axis just as we did with mirrors. It'll be an axis that bisects the center of the lens and lies along the focal points. Focal I'm going to show you the three different ray diagrams for convex lenses and the different types of images that it's formed. You'll certainly on the test also have a series of questions just asking you to describe what type of image is formed by what type of lens or mirror. So you should be able to these. These are very similar to concave mirrors. I'll provide you with paper if I have you do ray diagrams on the test. But if you have a ruler, you, actually I might just bring rulers for y'all. If you have one, you might want to bring one. Uh, but since there's just a handful of you, I can bring some. All right, so the first one is pretty easy. Parallel to the axis and through the focal point. And by the way, this is on the homework as well, so uh, you can get extra practice and they're on the screencast. Parallel to the axis. And then through the focal point. See, I've already drawn where the image is. That's the little upside down guy. And notice that this ray passes at the top of this head. So our rays are going to cross right here. And where the rays originate, I mean, at the top of his head, are what you'll see here. So uh, the rays also are crossing below the optical axis. So just like the mirrors, the image will be inverted. That's ray number one. Ray number two through the focal point, and then parallel to the axis. It bends, uh, it bends at the interfaces. So I'm just drawing it to the middle line, but it's, but it's actually bending here, and then it bends again here. It doesn't bend inside the lens, it travels in a straight line, but it bends at the interfaces. That's number two. And then the third one, which I'll do in green, just goes right through the center of the lens. It's probably the easiest to draw. Just like that. All right, where they all cross is where the image is. It's upside down. All right, excuse me, it's a real inverted image. I know it's real because it's opposite the side of the object. This next one, where it's at the focal point, you can only draw a couple of rays. You can draw the blue ray. That's rule number one. Oh, okay. Type screen. Okay. And draw it parallel to the axis. Where's the focal point? And then I can do the green as well. It just goes straight through the center of the lens. Like that. So these rays are parallel. They're never going to cross. Right, so they, this forms no image. We had this with the concave mirror. Remember 1 over F equals 1 over P plus 1 over Q. If P is equal to F, all right. If I can replace P with F, then 1 over Q equals 0. So Q approaches infinity. 1 over infinity is equal to 0. That means there's no image. The image forms at infinity. There is no image. And then the third one is a little more difficult because you're dealing with virtual rays. Uh, looks like this. Ray number 1, parallel to the axis. Through the focal point. Ray number two is through the focal point, but in this way. I'm going to draw a ray that looks like that. That looks like, if you were to trace it back, it was originating from the focal point. All right. So 
for rule number two, we'll see this a bit for the concatenation. But for rule number two, you're always starting with this focal point on this side. Right, so that ray is through the focal point, and then it goes parallel to the axis. It's two. And then rule number three is just right through the center of the lens. That's three. Okay, those are divergent rays. Uh, that means they're never going to cross on the real side of the lens, so they're going to cross on the virtual side of the lens. So if I want to know where the image is, I have to trace them back, just like we did with mirrors. So this is a virtual ray. Do that for all three. And where those rays cross, oh, I have to sort of fudge this a little bit. And so roughly right about there is where my image should be. But I just haven't been real careful in drawing. All right. <laughs> Follow this. My image is that here. Because these are virtual rays that cross. This is a virtual image. So always with this type of lens, you get a virtual upright bigger image. Always a virtual upright bigger image. Yeah, that's a virtual ray. We have those with mirrors. Okay? These ray diagrams are very, very similar to the mirror ray diagram. So it might be useful to just sort of put them side by side and, and learn them in, in parallel. And then one more might be the most difficult of them all. Uh, this is similar to the convex mirror. Um, First one is parallel to the axis. <laughs> and then it goes through the focal point. Remember, this is a diverging mirror, though, so the ray is going to look like this. All right, I'm going to go ahead and trace it back because I know I'm going to produce a virtual image. So while I have my ruler here, I'm going to trace it back. All right, so the dashed line there represents a virtual ray. For this next one, watch closely. I go through the focal point and then parallel to the axis. But I'm not going to go through this focal point. I'm going to go through this focal point on the opposite side. There's really no easy way to remember this. You sort of have to remember how to do it. Um, so I'm going to draw a ray. That looks like that. Such that if I were to trace it forward, it would go through the focal point. And then it's going to go parallel to the axis. And then I'm going to trace this back right there. So I know that my image is going to form right there where those two rays cross. And then I can also do ray number three, which is just right through the center of the lens. Three, two, and my image forms right there, where those three virtual rays cross. So this is a virtual image. Virtual images are always upright if they're formed by one lens. Virtual upright, and this is always smaller, just like for the convex here. Always virtual, always upright, always smaller. Alright, um, let me ask a question about the test. The test is going to be either Monday or Wednesday. We also have an assessment, so I don't really care when we have it. It's, I'm going to let y'all decide. Um, we'll just take it by, I don't know, we'll see what y'all say. So A is on Monday, B is on Wednesday. The test, yeah, this is the exam, the uh, fifth exam.
A, Monday, B, Wednesday. And then the other day we'll have that assessment. And that won't take the entire class period. We'll also have some time to sort of go over for the final. Okay. So is the last day the last day? Yeah, that's true, right? Everybody's going, okay. Seriously, that's not easy. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What's the schedule now? All right, we'll do it on Monday then. Sorry. Uh, all right. That's the problem we had with last time. I think in the syllabus, it was Wednesday. Oh, seriously? Yeah. Or on the back of the book, it's Wednesday on the syllabus. Yeah, on your syllabus. Oh, we have two dates, huh? I guess I changed it after the book went to the test. Wait, so it is? I don't know what syllabus is. Y'all have me all mixed up now. I, I have a slight preference for Monday. So I'm going to go with Monday. And then that way we'll have wins. So what's the test? It says this chapter, just one chapter. Easy test, yeah. So the final, we're going to have to cover chapter eight. No, the final's everything. So you can cover chapter 8 also? No. I'm sorry, we don't have time to get to chapter 8. Diffraction, interference. I'm sorry. So. All right, Monday is our exam. All right, exam. Just chapter seven, only chapter seven. It'll be a normal length exam. Okay, so you're probably gonna see some ray diagrams. You're gonna see combination lenses. You're gonna see uh, mirrors and stuff like that. So we're gonna do the next time we'll do combination lenses and uh, and finish up the concept that we just got and then we'll be done. Yeah, Jose. So that assessment. So that means that that will be Wednesday. Uh, the assessment will be for extra credit and it'll be on Wednesday. It won't take the whole class period, but we'll also have some time. Oh, sorry, I'll tell you about what to expect on the final. So I think y'all most of you know, but if, if you're not certain, like if you didn't have any before, then uh, you. Wednesday's the last day. Wednesday's the last day, yeah. Yeah, I hate not getting a chapter eight. It's kind of disappointing, but it's just because I did those top exams this year. I've been pretty good at that. Is your final going to be like last year's final or last night, where you just, you just covered the test that we last year? Hopefully, I can find them all. They're on the internet, so. <laughs> All right. Uh, if you didn't get your exam back, I have a, I have Mark. Uh, I have some exam threes as well. So, if you want to, let me just quickly Mark, Varun, Brian, and Varun. All right. Well, have a good day. Okay. Um, Are you going to be giving extra questions or quicker questions?